The path I took that led me to a jail cell was a long one, but it involved being bipolar, feeling way too awesome to take my meds, and Oceanside Police Department officers not appreciating me doing their makeup with a fire extinguisher. <laughs> I spent eight and a half months there before being processed out into a diversion program, but I still don't possess the ability to fully articulate how demoralizing and depressing it was. I was a month into being 20, or into 23 years old and had been diagnosed with a mental disorder and I'd never been arrested before, never been in any trouble legally. I was allowed to spend most of my time in county on what they called the J-cap floor or crazy person's floor. When I was processed mid-June of 2021, COVID protocol was in full effect at all of the county facilities. This meant, for the most part, I had maybe an out hour outside of my cell, if I was lucky. If I was unlucky, it would sometimes be several days before I was let out for a shower. Having to spend 23 hours of the day locked inside a grime, dirt, and bodily fluid spattered room was not on my bucket list. Definitely was not on my life events bingo card. Some people there had endured that for years. Um, Hang-ups with their trial. Uh, Hang-ups with their trial, the severity of their charges, and whether or not their mental, whether or not their mental competency was being called into question, and, or their public defender's ability to navigate the cases and its details. Any of these and more could cause an excruciating waiting period. Then, the virus made it worse, causing a huge backlog of cases. It was honestly a miracle I didn't spend even more time there due to the circumstances. The only things that broke the monotony, albeit in a diminishing manner as time went on, was sporadic conversation with fellow inmates, books, even though the glasses weren't my prescription, meal trays, and commissary. Jail food was served in a cardboard tray and consisted of a set meal, the same for every day of the week. I thankfully can't remember what the meal plan was, but I do remember everything being bland. Having hunger satiated was the only joy about those trays. The commissary, the in-jail convenience store basically, was a different story. I could fill out a sheet of Scantron paper, bubbling in what item I wanted and what amount I wanted of it. The next time commissary packages were delivered, I would get my order. I could get all kinds of stuff. Chips, drink packets, candy, toiletries. It gave us somewhat of a sense of normalcy. Hey, I might be itching all over because of body lice, but at least I've got a Snickers bar to munch on. <laughs> Maybe life isn't so bad after all. Being one of the fortunate ones to have outside support financially, I received a commissary package most weeks. This came with a downside, though. The inmates who had no one outside to help them would come and plead their cases as to why they should be given whatever food items the rest could spare. The coolest and most well-adjusted cellmate I had during my, stay, though, was, during my stay in jail was a guy in his 30s named Jay. He was average height, brown-haired, a bit pudgy, and had ghostly pale skin on account of having spent a lot of time within the walls of those 12 floors. No one got outside time, save for the brief moments of hopping on the and off the bus, if an appearance was at another courthouse such as Vista. The courthouse in downtown San Diego is accessed by inmate transport vehicles through an underground parking garage. So if the appointments take place solely downtown, you don't get to feel the sensation of sunlight making contact with your skin. Still, Jay was pretty cool. Never in my life would I think a murderer and drug dealer would become a temporary friend of mine. Once again, not on my bingo card. <laughs> he would call the beggars pigeons and had an old commissary bag repurposed for pigeon food. His words, not mine. This crumpled paper sack mostly contained individual servings of wheat bread that were so dry they weren't worth the trouble of eating them. 
These came at lunch as part of the provided cold meal, alternating every day between bologna of questionable origin and peanut, or peanut butter and jelly. You know? Jay and I would contribute to this bag with our bread, uh, and sometimes the apples, oranges, and bananas that looked a little questionable. As far as freshness goes, if we were feeling generous, we'd include a bag of the animal cookies sometimes too. The easiest way to get rid of someone standing on the other side of your door was often just capitulating and handing over an almost inedible item. Our module silence was broken by one of the heavy metal doors shooting open and slamming out the end of its track. Shortly after, I heard the all-too-familiar sound of jail slides making contact with the cold concrete floor. I knew it was coming. My cellmate knew it was coming, too. We waited in our bunks, listening to the raspy clop of the slides getting louder. They stopped in front of our door. Hey, do you have anything to eat? Any snacks? Nah, man, I'm all out. Sorry. Not the full truth, but we were running low with the housing module on quarantine. No commissary being delivered for a while at this point. The pigeons stood at our door for a few more seconds, eyes surveying the contents of our cell. COVID-19 protocol mandated that only a single cell should be opened at a time. So he was, the one, he was one of the only two people permitted in the common area. It was kind of like when you were young and got to walk around the fish aisle alone, except for the displays were filled with people. <laughs> he had a dirty white jail undershirt with sweat stains on the pits, and his navy blue jail pants looked about two sizes too big for him. Sometimes you could smell whoever was on the other side of your door, and this was one of those times. <laughs> Not really his fault. A bird bath in the cell sink can only do so much. Not being let out for days at a time also meant no access to the actual shower. His gaze settled on a, the bag of pigeon food underneath our desk. What's in the bag, he countered. We only got enough for us. You know about the quarantine situation. He stood there for a second, contemplating the most diplomatic approach to our pushback. Ah, oh, man, for real, his disappointment unmasked. It was hard not to sympathize with him. Most of the medications they opted to prescribe in there caused moderate to extreme hunger, especially at the doses they deemed therapeutic. Jay and I looked at each other, and I said, fuck it. Yeah, I guess. Jay sounded somewhere between annoyed and indifferent. I hopped down from the top bunk and reached into the bag, grabbing an apple, grabbing an I started to turn towards the door, but realized I forgot to grab the key. In order to pass any item of considerable size, you need to disengage the lock, keeping the food flap in place. This could easily, easily be done with a shard of the soap boxes you could buy from the commissary. Just stomp on it hard enough to crack it, and hope a piece of the wreckage is a suitable size to fit the mechanism. You remember how to do this, right? I was wary of giving the key out. It was easy for someone to break them if they didn't know what they were doing. Yeah, man, slide it under the door. His, the impatience in his voice was apparent. After he successfully finagled the latch open, I handed him the apple. Cool, thanks, he said before taking a bite and walking away. I returned to my bunk. It got to be a bit of an annoyance that the guys in there didn't seem to understand that we could have just told them to kick rocks. We were all hungry, man. Maybe more of an acknowledgement, not just a dismissive thanks, before walking away, never to be heard from again until they needed something else. From my bunk, I could see out the two windows to the common area, where the pigeon was nonchalantly shuffling around and eating the apple. Having been in non-JCAT non units before I was sent to the crazy floor, I learned each had a different atmosphere. The people who are mentally ill but higher functioning kind of take care of the other inmates that appear to be compromised mentally. This was one of the ways my cellmate and I tried to do that. This place sucks, man. How have you done it for so long? I asked Jay as he lay there with a shirt over his face. 
If you don't have anyone to order your books, there's not much to do to pass the time besides sleep. Most of us agreed to wait until we got let out to exercise, as the room got pretty funky pretty fast if you didn't try to minimize smells. I don't know. Knowing that, I, that prison is going to be better than this kind of gives a light at the end of the tunnel, was his reply. Jail was a mentally consuming fire, and prison was his cozy little frying pan. How did your court date go? I thought maybe changing the topic would help keep a conversation going. I had finished the book our next door cellmate loaned me, and at a certain point, your body just won't let you sleep anymore, even if you try. I didn't go, man. They can do whatever they're going to do. I'm still going to go to prison. He was right. He didn't need to go for the formalities. Waking up at three or four for the bus to wait in the freezing holding cell. Long bus rides to court shackled to another person. Sitting in a metal room on the bus with either little or no view of the outside. Listening to pretrial hopefulness turned into post-trial apathy. He was fucked. Simple as that. The juxtaposition of his alleged charges and his friendly, easygoing demeanor kind of threw me for a loop. He found some humor in most everything, was open in conversation, and generally charismatic. There was no way this guy probably sold people their final bag of fentanyl. There was no way that he killed someone. But he absolutely did. How long until he finally gets sentenced? I probably got annoying at times with the questions I came up with, but he put up with it. Probably going to be the middle of this year, or maybe towards the end. That's what my lawyer said, at least. It was just the beginning of 2022, so he had a way to go before leaving the jail. Time moves unbelievably slow in county jail, and from what I've heard from others, more so than in actual prison. He was, at a minimum, probably going to get six or seven years. I couldn't imagine. All right, man. I'm going to try to get some sleep in, I said. A futile task, though, I knew. Good luck, he said, chuckling. Not succeeding and falling back asleep, I got up to do some pacing. Cell was only long enough for me to get 3.1 steps in before I had to turn around. I thought about the prospects for my future. There weren't a lot. Same went for most people on this floor. Only thing I really had going for me was that I was still young and still had time to start the journey towards taking my life back. The journey from one side of the cell to the other was a lot quicker. My jail slide's rasp echoed around our room rhythmically. Fuck, that must have been annoying for the J. I still can't wrap my head around people paying for the components that played that metronome of misery. $600 on eBay. There's actually a decent market for st stolen jail clothing. <laughs> More power to you if you've got that kind of money for a Halloween costume or gel fetish. You know, not judging. <laughs> the central jail in downtown San Diego, which often goes unnoticed by the majority of people, is the tall, bland building on Front Street, which consists of 12 floors. Directly across the street is a homeless encampment where so many of those pigeons populating jail come to roost. I'm doing better now, finishing up my first semester at college, got my own room for rent, attempting to live life to the fullest. One of the best things I've got going for me, though, is being out of jail and never having to tend to those pigeons again. Give it up for Vamp first timer. Don't forget to tip your bartender. Vamp first timer, Maxwell Rouette.